Hello. Good day to you all. My name is Dr. Obafemi Oyewumi. I'm an accountant, and also a lover of accounting, and also teach accounting. Today, we're looking at a very important topic in cost accounting, and that is has to do with um, overheads. So we're looking at accounting for overheads. It should be a useful you know, topic for all accounting students and also those that are in related departments, related, you know, offering related courses, those in finance, business administration, actuarial science, and all of that. I believe that this particular topic will help to advance, you know, your understanding of um, overheads, even as you take this particular topic in as part of um, you know uh, the topics in um, accounting and so i welcome you all to this particular um, uh, class even this particular moment and i want to say thank you for joining thank you for being part of it i'm going to put this you know on online and i wish that um, you join you know others in subscribing you know to my channels and i trust that even as you do that the uh, you'll be able to have more understanding and, of course, learn more. You can go back and revisit this particular page so that I can have better understanding of the topic. I welcome your comments. I welcome your suggestions. I also welcome your uh, criticism, as it were. So thank you for joining once again. My screen is already shared, and I believe it's time for us to, uh, to go, okay, this hour. Accounting for overheads, meaning classification and allocation, okay? Accounting for overhead, meaning classification and allocation. My, my name is Dr. Obafemi Oyeume once again. So let's go. What are the learning objectives here? At the end of this particular class, it's expected that you will be able to define, you know, overhead. You also learn the steps to take in order for you to account for overhead. You're also going to appreciate, you know, what it takes to collect overheads. Okay, I'm sure again you also uh, have the privilege to understand and explain what it takes to what it means to classify overheads and of course also to understand the concept of overhead allocation. So let's start from the very beginning. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. What is overhead or what are overheads? Now, departments, companies, corporate organizations, okay, they they, they do two things, basic things for them to survive. The first one is either they produce goods and or manufacture goods for them to sell. And then the other one is for them to, uh, you know, uh, sell, I mean, rather to, to render services. Now, overheads are cost incurred in the cost of making a product or rendering a service or running a department, but which cannot be traced directly and in full to the product, service, or department. We're saying that these are costs that you cannot trace directly you know, to the cost of um, the product. Basically, that gives us an understanding here. Basically, there are two, when it comes to manufacturing a cost, I mean, product, all those costs will be you know, classified into two. The first one is indirect cost, and the second one is indirect cost. First one is direct cost, and then the second one is indirect cost. When we talk about direct cost, we're talking about you know costs that are traceable directly, you know, to the cost of a particular product. Whereas the indirect costs are those ones that you cannot trace, you know, to a particular cost, you know, of um, you know of of uh, you know of of of, of a product rather. Okay, so overhead, you know, by definition here is a combination of indirect material costs, indirect labor costs, and indirect expenses, which cannot be conveniently or directly traced to a particular cost center or cost of a product of this in an economically feasible uh, manner. Now, it is good for us at this particular point in time to understand, you know, some basic terms, okay, or terminologies that are relevant in this particular you know, topic today. You'll be hearing them more and more okay, as we continue. The first one is a cost center. What's a cost center? A cost center is any object or person or office or place that has the capacity, the capacity to accumulate or generate cost, okay, to incur cost, all right? So um, it could be you know, a faculty, department, an item of equipment, you know, motor vehicles, 
and offices, well, whoever has the capacity to generate cost is a cost center. In most cases, they just generate cost, they don't incur, they don't, they don't generate profits. All right. The second one is service center. So when we talk about service center, it's a cost center as well. But of course, these are centers that are not directly involved in the production of goods. So they are just there to oil, you know, the process, to oil the machinery as it were. Okay, so they exist to serve other production departments or production centers. So, the for example, we have medical centers in schools, we have bus routes in schools. They are just there to service other units in the, you know, the faculty or the departments or the, you know, the, the, the university at large. And the last one is production center. A production center is also a core center. You know, it engages directly in the production of manufacturing of, um, of goods, you know, um, uh, of goods and production of um, you know products basically all right so steps to take in accounting for overheads the following are the steps to take when it comes to accounting for overheads the first one is classification of overheads the second one is third you know second one is collection of overhead allocation of overhead apportionment overhead and absorption overhead now this particular topic now is divided into three parts three parts the first one we will be looking at will be uh, classification of overhead collection and allocation we we'll move on to when, when after this particular part, we we'll move on to part two, where we'll be dwelling on apportionment, and then part three, where we'll be referring to absorption of overhead. Okay, uh, so let's continue to look at classification now. What does it mean? What we'll about classification of overhead? This is a process of grouping uh, all overheads, you know, into separate groups, the separate classes. Okay, based on some common characteristics. All right, business of common characteristics. And there are three basic ways you know, to, class, to classify overhead. The first one is by element, the third one, the second one is by function, and then the third one is by behavior. So we talk about element, function, and of course, and by behavior. When we talk about element, we are saying we're saying refer, we are referring to the basic elements of cost. Basic elements of cost, and we have three elements of cost, you know, in accounting. The first one is material, the second one is labor, and then the third one is, you know, is an expense or expenses, okay? Expenses. Now, when we talk about, you know, overheads now here, in this case, we're looking at indirect materials, indirect labor, and indirect expense. Those ones that cannot be traced directly, you know, to uh, a particular cost of a product. So, for example, when we talk about indirect materials, we talk about, you know, supplies, you know, we talk about oil, we talk about lubricants that are used in you know, factories to, you know, to produce, you know, to, to maybe to, to oil or to fuel or to, um, you know, uh, generate power within the factory. In that level, of course, we talk about, um, you know, cost of um, those employees that are not based, that, you know, that are not um, remunerated based on products, based on units. They are really based on passage of time. For example, we talk about the supervisor, we talk about the factory manager. Those ones are indirect, you know, uh, labor. And of course, indirect expenses. Again, they also talk. We talk about uh, passage of time here. We talk about those expenses that cannot be seen, that matter that cannot be felt. You know, um, they are they are invisible. Okay, so we talk about indirect expenses. You know, here. For example, we talk about rent, we talk about insurance, and of course, those are the ones that we are looking at. But function, we have class, we're talking about classification based on the function that such overhead, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, perform. The first, we talk about production or manufacturing, administrative overheads, selling and distribution overhead, research and development overhead. So whichever function that they perform, of course, will also serve as a basis for classifying, you know, uh, them. The last one is by behavior. When we talk about behavior here, we talk about fixed overhead, semi and variable overhead, and of course, variable overhead. When we talk about, you know, fixed overhead, we are talking about overheads that do not change, you know, over time based on the level of production or unit that being, you know, are produced. Fixed overhead are costs, are those costs which do not vary, we change in the volume of production, you know, uh, you know, uh, relating to a particular uh, level. Okay, whereas variable overhead are those ones that you know they change based on the level of um, or units produced, you know, per time. That is that's talking about variable overhead. Variable overhead are those costs which vary in direct proportion to the volume of production. So let's move on to a collection collection how do we gather how do we collect overhead how do we know you know the quantity i mean the amount to be taken as you know overhead number one we talk about material deposition notes 
Mantra Equation has to do basically with you know, nodes that are raised for the purpose of bringing out materials from the stock. So when it comes when it comes to uh, indirect materials, we could go to material equation nodes which have been generated and being kept in the store. All right. The second one is clock card, specifically specifically for indirect um, labor and of course invoices for other um, supplies being taken, being taken, you know, for the purpose of um, you know producing goods uh, uh, in the in the factory. Okay, and general journals of course have to do with um, uh, expenses that are. You know, like I said earlier on, due to passage of time, expenses that are related to um, rent, related to uh, uh, insurance and all uh, whatnot. So that's, those are ones that we have as, um, you know, um, you find in the general uh, journal. So let's move on now to the third one, uh, you know, this particular uh, part, allocation of overheads, allocation of overheads. This is the process of charging a full amount of an individual item, of course, directly to a cost center for which this item, of course, was incurred. So we're saying here that any cost that's indirect cost that is related to a specific department, that particular cost will be charged, indirect and direct cost will be charged to the department that, you know, that, uh, that it pertains to. So for example, production department will take care of all the production overheads, okay? Whereas the for administrative overheads, okay, they'll be charged to administrative departments, okay. All the selling and all the selling expenses, that's the indirect part of it, will also be charged to selling and distribution department. And of course, those ones that are you know general, generally in killed, of course, will have will also be charged to the various overhead cost centers. All right. So let's move on to the uh to this particular example that we have here. Let's look at this example. We talked about um, a, a particular company that has, you know, four men, okay, four men, one in department A, one in department B, and then direct material consumed in department A, and a rent of the premises share between um, departments A and B, okay, and of course they have two, three uh, cost centers. The first one is department A, department B, and of course the rent, okay, so department A and B will share the rent, you know, according to the ratio two to one. How can we allocate the above costs? How can we allocate the above cost? Okay, so ordinarily you see that they are all, they are item specific. We had one for department A, department B, department A, and then the shared you know element, shared cost A and B. So the shared cost will be you know distributed between the two of them. While this one will be allocated directly to the respective department that generated them. So let's look at the solutions there. The, you know suggestions that we have here. So the wages for the four men one will be charged two hundred thousand. Charge to department A and then department B, will, of course, will have 150,000 indirect materials um, consumed specifically for department A now, nothing for department B. That's why it is blank there. So, because it's charged directly to, uh, that will charge directly to department A and then for the rent, it will be shared ratio two to one, ratio two to one. Look at the amount here 300, ratio two to one. So, A takes two and then B takes one uh, over three. So that's why we have it like that there. So when you look at the total, at the end of the day, you have you know the allocated cost for department A and when B. Total will be for A four hundred fifty thousand, and then for B two hundred and fifty uh, thousand naira. Okay, so let's move on again as we look at this particular example again relating to uh, allocation. Now the following costs have been analyzed for X Y Z. Uh, production um, limited, XYZ production limited. So we have, they have two services, two service departments here, rather, two service departments. The first department, service department one, service department two, okay, service department one, service department two, and then production department one A and B, okay. Now let's look at the constituents, okay, the components of the various costs. Diet material, we have 150, 500, 300. Like that, okay. Um, direct wages we can see 75, 40, 400, 250. Direct expenses 60, 30, 300, 200. Indirect material 40, 20, 180. Indirect wages 10,000 naira, and then of course 15,000, 80,000, and 50,000. So it should prepare a statement showing the location of overheads. Showing the location of overheads. Now, the service department, because they are there. They don't produce, they are there to serve 
this other production you know department everything in cured here will eventually be taken and shared to this department a production department a and production department b so everything here will be taken as overhead basically basically will be taken as overhead you know for service department a and service department b and then whereas in for production, production department these are direct costs okay will not be taken as uh, overheads because they are direct to the production of the goods that they make okay that's been churned out of this particular company so in that case we're only going to be having indirect material uh, and indirect wages so let's look at the solutions uh provided here so like i said earlier i was trying to explain all the expenses incurred both direct and indirect will be taken as you know over here because eventually they incurred them for these two production department. These are the basic accounting department, or that will be uh, for another for to, to for this company to determine the cost of the product of, of producing one unit or producing the all the goods that they are making. All of this will be shared eventually to this production uh, unit because they exist to serve them. So here we have the total of everything that is taken as overhead, and then we have the only the indirect material and indirect which is for production department A. And production department B. So total here we have 285,000, and then we have 155,000 for the service department B or two, and then for production department A, they have 180, and then for production department B, they have uh it has 130. So so that's what we have, you know, in terms of allocation. Allocation has to do with those you know taking charging directly to you know the different units, the different call centers, okay, all the indirect costs that are related to them, you know, related to them specifically, those ones are, that's why we call it allocation. So they are taken directly and, you know, taking, uh, you know, giving to them as their own cost. That's why it is branded as allocation. So that will bring us to the end of the first part of accounting for overhead. I believe that you have learned one or two things, you know, even here today, and I really want to appreciate you sincerely once again for being part of it. So don't forget, to join, uh, to hit this, um, um, to subscribe to this particular uh, channel. And I trust that um, you will have opportunities to learn more, okay, uh, even as time goes on. So wait for part two of this particular topic. Thank you for being part of it. I, I appreciate you all. See you in the next class.